I would have a rush of anxiety every time I ever hopped on a scale. Once I saw 70, 74 on the scale, that scared me. Randy Wilson had always been a petite girl. Now in her 20s, she was trying to get even smaller. I could actually really hurt myself if, if I keep this up because it's not like I can just keep going down and still be alive. It all started in September 2012. Still grieving from the loss of her grandmother months earlier, she was back in college for her junior year. Alone, living on campus and juggling a challenging schedule, she became obsessed with being thin, not through purging, but exercising and dieting. It was like a drug. I started kind of keeping track of all the calories I was intaking and how many I was exerting at the gym. Initially, I don't think I knew that I had lost control. Then she started dating a guy who preferred slender women. Randy remembers one night on a date, he insinuated she was fat. I was completely embarrassed and hurt, and so I began taking all of the exercise and all of my diet um, habits to a whole new level. It became really important to me to make sure that my body was perfect. Within one month, over-exercising and dieting had taken over her life. She broke up with her boyfriend and finished out the semester and moved back home. By now, she had dropped five sizes and was wearing baggy clothes to hide her body. Her mom, Penny, noticed it one day when she walked in the bathroom and saw Randy getting out of the shower. I saw every rib on the, the top part of her body. I was in shock. I was like, and I remember saying something like, Randy, what are you doing? You look awful. At once, Penny took Randy to their doctor. Weighing in at barely 85 pounds, Randy was diagnosed with anorexia nervosa and prescribed an antipsychotic medication. By Christmas Eve, she weighed 74 pounds, and her heart rate dropped so low, she had to be hospitalized. Doctors told her mom she could die. It was sheer panic. I knew that, that things could be close to the end if something didn't happen quick. It was a moment of shock for me, and I, I was actually scared for the first time. I need to gain weight for my health, but I was also scared about what I let myself gain weight. But I prayed constantly, and I know God heard my prayers. I believe in God healing, and I believe in God's miracles. After being released from the hospital, Randy dropped out of college. Over the next six years, she battled anorexia and overexercising and depression. During this time, she also began attending church, praying, and reading her Bible. One day, while in a treatment center, Randy says she had a revelation from God. I ever want to have a life, whether or not I'm even able to have kids, if I want to get married or travel and see the world, the only thing that's going to make me change is by asking God to help me. God was saying, I'm not expecting you to be perfect. Get on your knees every time you start to slip and fall and ask me to help you. It was like a weight was lifted off of me. It was like I could finally ask God to help me let go of this obsession that's been controlling me. Near the end of her time in treatment, she was looking to God, eating more and exercising less. She had gained 15 pounds. I mean, it took time, but the more I asked him to give me peace, he did. Then another prayer was answered. In 2018, Randy married Ben, and the two hoped to start a family. However, doctors believed it was unlikely she would be able to conceive because of the damage she'd done to her body. So for over three years, they tried and prayed until finally Randy got pregnant. In June 2021, Randy gave birth to their daughter they named Noah. I was so flooded with emotions. It was the best feeling I've ever had in my entire life. I see Noah for the first time, and it's amazing just to see life that wasn't supposed to be there. Today, Randy enjoys being a stay-at-home mom and is pregnant with her second baby. She uses her spare time at a nonprofit called Vocal Survivors Outreach that help people who struggle with mental health issues, including eating disorders. The value of my image comes from a sense of beauty that I get from God. 
I could not be more grateful for how He created me. I would encourage family members that are going through a similar situation to never give up, to continue to pray that God does miracles and He still does them. Prayer is your greatest weapon because when you open up your heart to prayer, that's when God can come in and give you the strength that you need to overcome. Wow, what an amazing miracle testimony. We just praise God along with you, Randy, for what he has done in your life. God is a generational God. He is a miracle working God. He is a God that hears our prayers. He is our helper. And I'm just reminded as I watched that story, God is not expecting you to be perfect. He told Randy that. He said, I'm not expecting you to be perfect. I know you're not perfect. I don't want you to be perfect. All I want to do is help you. I want to help you in this struggle. For Randy, it was an eating disorder. It was anorexia. And I know there are so many women and men out there who have struggled with this for years and you can't seem to get past it. There hasn't been a breaking point, a release, but I'm here to tell you that there can be one. As you just saw in Randy's story, it was a journey, it was a process, it wasn't immediate. And in our culture today, we want things instantaneously. And sometimes God works that way, but other ways, as we said earlier in this program, He wants us to partner with Him, just like Randy did. He told Randy, whenever you're feeling anxious, whenever you don't want to eat and you want to starve yourself, cry out to me because I am your helper. I am the helper. I am your redeemer. I am your savior. Jesus died on the cross, not only to forgive us of our sins, but to make us whole because we are a broken people in need of a savior. We will always be. So if you have not ever welcomed Jesus into your struggle, into your mess, whether it's an eating disorder or an addiction or depression or suicidal thoughts, invite him in today, friend, because that is the breaking point. When you come to the end of your road and you say, God, I don't want to do life my own way. It's only led to a deeper, darker pit. Jesus is holding out his hand and saying, let me help you out of that pit today. In order for to say yes to him, it's simple. Just say yes, just surrender to him. Surrender your life today. Ask God for help. It's a very simple prayer. Do it with me right now. Let's, let's just go to, to God in prayer right now. Lord Jesus, I want you. I want your help. Forgive me, Lord Jesus, for turning my face away from you. Today, I turn back to you. I stop living this life of sin this life of despair, trying to do things my own way. God, I stop in my tracks and I just turn back to you. I turn from my wicked ways in the name of Jesus and I ask for forgiveness of my sins. Lord Jesus, I want you and today I make you Lord and Savior of my life. I surrender to you, Jesus. And Holy Spirit, I ask you to infiltrate my mind, my heart, my body, my soul and my spirit. Today I choose to partner with you. I thank you in advance for the healing, for the breakthrough that you're going to give me in this situation, in this struggle. Today I choose you like never before. I love you, Lord Jesus. In your name I pray, amen and amen. Friend, if you just prayed that prayer with me, please do one more thing. Make sure you give us a call at 1-800-700-7000 and tell somebody that you just gave your life to Jesus. We have amazing free resources that we can send you via mail or we can give them to you digitally that are just gonna help you on this new faith journey. God bless you, friend. 
Hey everyone, I'm Ashley Key. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so we can reach more people with encouraging content like you just watched and so you never miss a beat. See you next time and God bless.